do you want to hear something that I thought was once impossible? Okay, here it is. You know, lots of things in uh, policing are, di like I said, difficult to fix. Bike theft is not difficult to fix, and it's not expensive to fix. Did you catch that? You know, lots of things in uh, policing are, di like I said, difficult to fix. Bike theft is not difficult to fix. And bike theft is not difficult to fix. It is not difficult to fix. And bike theft is solvable? I mean, this sounds crazy on some level, right? Like, I'm pretty sure whatever city you live in has a serious bike theft problem. Well, maybe there is a solution. Hey everyone, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting, and the ways we get around our cities. If you like this video, please subscribe for more content and uh, maybe consider hitting that super thanks button. So that quote came from Rob Brunt, a guy who has appeared a lot on this channel over the last couple of years for a couple of reasons, all related to bike theft. For one, he was for a time the only full-time police officer in North America, maybe the world dedicated to stopping bike theft. These days, he's no longer a cop. He works with Project 5 to 9, which is a project he began when he worked with Vancouver Police, which is an anti-bike theft program that's built around a online bike database registry, but it's much bigger than that. When the Project 5 to 9 program started in Vancouver about seven years ago, Vancouver was the worst city in North America for bike theft. The rates were just sky high. Since that program started, the number of reported bike thefts this was just released. The number of reported bike thefts is down 52%. 52%! Seriously, that's an incredible number. Now, I have a whole video explaining how this program works and all of its nuances, so I'm not going to go through all that again, but I've never really highlighted the community side of this program. Now, Granville Island is a spot in Vancouver, a real tourist hub, and it used to be the worst place in the worst city for bike theft in all of North America. It was terrible. Well, that was one of the areas that Project 5 to 9 first focused on in its bike theft reduction initiatives. And it's really cool how the community got on board. And so Rob and I went for a walk through Granville Island and he showed me some of the little initiatives that were taken down there to help reduce bike theft. Maybe they'll be applicable in your city. Let's go for a walk and find out. The first tactic Rob told me about is probably the simplest. It involves ensuring that the racks where people park their bikes are located in high traffic, prominent locations. We're here on Granville Island now, and describe what was here when you first started. What was the situation here? Uh, so, um, one of the areas we came down, we were talking about bike theft, and, and uh, Jay and I were walking all through, and so we uh, just by accident came around the corner here. Two people from out of town came running up. We could see there was a commotion in that, and they had their bicycles stolen. So we walk in behind this restaurant, or it used to be a restaurant, in behind. And so you would figure, like, the bike rack would probably be best underneath a shelter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's well lit here and that. No, it's around the bend here in the, in the shade. Right. Like, and so less people to see it. But way more opportunity for a thief to work in the shadows. So the, the bike rack was sort of positioned in a bad spot, yeah, in the shadows, absolutely. away from people. Right Not even walls. bolted, wasn't bolted to the ground. So what they had done was typical, like uh, like I lock my bike right now. You use the, I like to use the outside of the, on a coat hanger rack, yeah. I like to use the outside. So it gives you more real estate to lock your lock to. But the bad side is if it's not bolted to the ground, All right. pick it up and slide the lock out. So bad so. rack, badly positioned. Yep, and bad, bad, lock, bad locking technique. Bad locking technique. Now we walked just around the corner to see where the rack had been relocated. We, we wanted invisibility, right? Like you, you know, uh, one of the things I always say, like there was a rack down here in a back alley in between buildings, the dark, like never mind locking your bike. I wouldn't want my daughter walking through that section. Right. Like never mind putting my bicycle there. So as you can see, we moved the rack over here. So lots of people walking by. Yeah, much more public spot. Yeah, yep. You know, and now, now the crook's not working in the shadows anymore. He's out. He or she's out in the open. Got lots of people. You got lots of people walking by. Lots of eyes, and crooks don't like that, right? So, so, but very simple, inexpensive, right? To move, to move a rack. The next tactic is what they called a loaner lock program. This involved getting local businesses to loan locks to customers who arrived by bike and didn't have their own proper bike lock. One of the things we, we buy these expensive bikes and we're, it's all about weight and that. And then you were like, yeah. uh, I spent $3,000 on my bike, but now I'm, now I'm broke and I don't want to spend any money on a lock. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Right. So one of the things, one of the aspects was 
uh, you know, a lot of get the businesses down here involved. And so we did a loaner lock program. So you can visit the Granville Island Brew Pub, the, uh, the Keg Steakhouse, and Mom Pa's coffee shop over here, the bakery, and you can walk in, drop off your driver's license, and they'll loan you one of those folding Bordeaux locks. Right. And so it, it, even if I've got my own folding lock, I can, why not have two? Yeah, yeah. Right? And so it's easy, drop off your driver's license. And now instead of, you know, typical, you know, cyclists leaving their bike, sitting on the edge of the seat, you know, drinking their coffee, looking, stretching, you know, <laughs> watching the bike, have a sip. Well, this way, you know, now two locks on a bike, now you're talking six minutes, lots of sparks, even with a grinder, right? Yeah. So Just make so, it a little bit easier for people to do the right thing. Absolutely, so yeah. give them lots of, you know, give them lots of options. Maybe the most visible tactic was when the program landed some funding from the federal government, which owns this market, to start a valet parking program for bikes, which was operated by a local nonprofit. Okay, so what is this thing here? So this is, this was, uh, it's called the carving shed, but this was the home for the bike valet. Right. So when you came down, uh, it was all free, wheeled up on your bicycle. Uh, the, the bike valet staff would take your bicycle, they would put it in behind secured. But the other thing that was awesome was you could get your bike registered with five to nine while you're here. Right. So drop off your bike, go get your groceries, go have a beer, come back, bike's registered, bike's secure. I think the bike valet had done, you know, over the, the life of the bike valet company, it was, uh, it's a nonprofit called Best. I think they've parked over, you know, 50,000 bicycles and never lost one. And, you know, this is something we learned from being in Bogota, Colombia. Um, you could ride into any shopping center, any city parking lot, and they had a bike valet. And, and not just like, a, a card scan and walk in and you know walk in with your two hundred dollar bike and steal the thousand dollar bike. Uh, it's it's manned, right? And that's there's a human there. There's a human there, and that's the in my opinion that's the key component. Is I haven't seen any computer system, thumbprints, anything like that that work better than having an actual human there. And now all of a sudden I'm like, instead of you know being worried in the back of my mind about my bike being stolen, there's no worry here, and I'm going to shop more. I'm going to spend more time here. I'm going to have, I might have lunch now. And I'm like, uh, you know, I've came down, I came down just to get some groceries, but now I'm going to have a beer and dinner. So it's good for business too. It's awesome for business. So they operated uh, May till the end of September. Um, and then, but they were business hours and that's where the loaner lock came in as well. Oh, so see. now loaner lock, you want to go for beer after this is closed you still have the loaner lock option. Education was also a big part of the program here, which included signage about proper locking techniques, the importance of registering your bike, and displaying the five to nine garage shield. He's got a, you know, high, uh, you know, a fairly high level kryptonite on there and a nice Avis on the front on one bicycle, right? right. That's, that's six to 10 minutes of grinder time, right? And so the crook's just gonna go, mm, <laughs> well, and like I said, like the locks here, there's not, there's not a single cable lock here. Yeah, like out of anybody, here. right? And you notice something on this bike over here too. Yes, <laughs> that, that rad's got a shield on it, right? So it's already registered. That's the five to nine shield. So it's a tamper-proof sticker. You, so you download the app, register your bike for free, and then the you know take a picture of the side of the bike, you with the bike, front of the bike, uh, and then the next step is to shield your bike. Anybody can search the stolen database. So cops. Uh, cycling community, everybody working together to protect that bicycle. So we say it's five to nine protected. So if you're a crook, I'm gonna leave that bike alone because it's gonna take me a ton of time to cut through the lock. If I see a shielded bike, I'm gonna leave that alone because now the cops know who the owner is. And so if the thief gets stopped with that bicycle, the policeman can go, um, hey Joe, uh, you're not Mr. Smith. Yeah, so we do, we were just doing what we did here in this last summer because this was our highest bike theft area in the city. Um, we brought in the bike valet. Uh, and you would, like I saw you, you're not leaving this bike. Providing safe and secure bike parking is key to any bike theft reduction initiative. And here on Granville Island, they managed a unique way of finding some space for it. Okay, so this looks like what used to be Car parking. parking. <laughs> exactly. So when we first came down, big changes for the, the businesses and that, they were a little bit grumbly because they lost four parking spots. And then all of a sudden, what you can see today, you know, these four, how many people would be in those four cars, right? Yeah. Compared you know, to even those. if we jam, even if you said they were completely full, so, you know, eight, four, eight, 12, 16, 16 people. Yeah, it's and a no brainer. Well, as you know, cyclists care about cyclists, right? So. 
you know, no, no cyclist here is going to let somebody walk by and see them with bolt cutters or, you know, a grinder. They're going to go, you know, they'll start filming, they'll phone 911, you know, and so that's what we want. As a criminal, you, this is this is your worst. If you're a bike thief, this is not where you want to be, right? Like, yes, there's lots of selection, but you don't want to be, you don't want to be with all these cyclists, right? Uh, I would hate to imagine <laughs> what would happen. <laughs> you might, if as a crook, you might want the police to get here quickly, right? <laughs> this kind of program seems doable in a place like Granville Island, which is relatively small and contained and has lots of engaged people. But what about across an entire city? So Granville Island is like a little tiny island in the middle of a big city. Yeah. Can this program scale to the size of a city? I, yeah, I, absolutely. So we, uh, we, I was working with the city of Victoria on Vancouver Island last year, and uh, they brought in a bike valet. So they have a bike valet right at City Hall. Uh, you know, so it was it was so popular uh, when they shut it down in the winter. I think they had like 2,000 emails saying, "Hey, where's the bike valet?" Like their bike theft in that area, and within a two mile radius, their bike theft went it plummeted. Right, like one of the highest areas, just like here, highest area to lowest area, just by doing, you know, a bike valet. So it's these simple measures that don't cost a lot of money, but take a, a bit of thought and investment from the community to get going. It's it makes just, a big difference. Absolutely, just take somebody with a little bit of willpower, right? right. Like we've, we've shown the world that like Vancouver is not unique. Like we're like, just, it just takes a little bit of effort. And, and you know, we, you know, Ottawa jumped on board with the program, their bike theft's down 30%. Montreal is on board. Like, it just, it just grows. Police are always looking for ways to solve crime. Yeah. Right? Like, like, and a lot of stuff is, you know, you know, is difficult and it takes a lot of resources and all that. Bike theft is solvable. We've, we've, sh we've proved it, proven it here. It's not expensive. Uh, it's it's you know relatively easy to do. The cyclists, if they believe in the program, like the cyclists want something like five to nine, to because they, they we're tired of being victimized. It doesn't matter if it's Vancouver, Prince George, uh, you know Denver, Colorado, Bogota, Bogota, Colombia. Everywhere we've been, New Zealand, it's the same thing. Because there's no way for the police to connect the dots without having this registration right. system. Um, it, it's the, the, the bad guys, it's like a victimless crime to them. We'll spend millions of dollars on infrastructure for, you know, bicycle paths, which I love, but this isn't a million dollar project. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, thanks, thanks for all your work on this and thanks no, for taking some time today. No, thanks. Great to, <laughs> great to see you again and thanks for your, thanks for your work. It's the community. Yeah. <laughs> People everywhere want to do something about this. So I yeah. think there's a lot of interest. All right. Yep. Okay. It's awesome. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks. So those are some of the community initiatives that were undertaken here. And they're not that big of a deal, right? They all seem pretty simple. But I, I don't think the point here is the specifics of each initiative. What's important here is how the community came together. Like in this program, there was the federal government was involved, the municipal government was involved, uh, bike shops, stores, uh, volunteers, bike advocacy groups. Everyone came together with a common goal, a common purpose. What I hope you're taking away from this video isn't necessarily that Project 5 to 9 is the only way to go, that you need to buy into this program. I mean, I'm not getting anything from Project 5 to 9 from making these videos. I just think it's a, a great program. I've never seen one work that well. The takeaway should be that maybe it's time to get over this idea that we can't do anything to stop bike theft. This is a program that's made a huge dent without arresting more people or anything like that. I know there's a lot of mistrust of police out there, but this seems to be the kind of program where you can rebuild that trust. So it's really interesting on lots of levels. And so the takeaway from this video, I think, should be Let's get over the idea that we can't do anything about bike theft. As Rob said, bike theft is solvable. Hopefully this can inspire you in your city to at least get people talking about this problem, to talk about the ways that we can prevent bike theft, because it is a huge barrier to cycling that I think is often overlooked. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.